Hello, we are Hunter Hunter Institute. What are your thoughts on the skull that appeared in volume 35? We think there might be many readers who didn't notice it as it appeared when Kropika's Emperor Time was activated. In this video, we would like to thoroughly discuss the meaning of the skull. 1. Before and After the Skull the drawing of the skull appeared in the latter half of episode 366. Let's check what happens before and after the scene. If you can remember, you can skip to 405 of this video. First of all, before the skull drawing, Kropika was panicking and used his ability, Steel Chain. The Steel Chain ability allows you to stick a syringe into your opponent and temporarily steal their Nen ability. And if you continue to absorb their aura with a syringe, you can also put them in a state of Zetsu. Like Krolo Lucilfer's Skill Hunter, Lel's Rental pod and others. This is a useful ability that allows you to use your opponent's Nen ability against them. This time, Kropika uses Steel Chain to temporarily steal Sayil's Nen ability called Little Eye. Little Eye is an ability that catches small animals with a ball-shaped Nen and then controls them. It is a very useful ability. Kropika's Steel Chain can be used by other people and Kropika, who was guarding the 8th Queen, Oito, at the time, allowed her to use Little Eye. But while stealing an ability with the Steel Chain, Kropika has to initiate Emperor Time, and it stays active until the stolen ability is used. The side effect of Emperor Time was already explained on the Black Whale, and it is incredibly heavy. For every second of activation, the lifespan of the wielder is shortened by one hour. Kropika used the Little Eye ability to look for small creatures, but he couldn't find any and had trouble finding the right moment to activate the stolen ability. He was then surrounded by other guards of other princes and thought, oh no, at this rate I cannot let Queen Oito use the ability. Just how long will I have to keep Emperor Time activated. As he continues to think, I was naive. This ability, this limitation, this poison is far more dangerous than I imagined. The drawing of the skull appears. Now, here is what comes after the skull scene. After this is the famous scene with Krolo Lucilfer and the only reference to the Phantom Troop in Volume 35. We can see the number 37564 and a cockroach being squashed. An old man next to Krolo asks him, what's wrong? You look like you're about to kill someone. He then adds, I know you must have gone through a lot to get on this boat, but once you're on board, just forget about all that. And Krolo replied, I'm afraid it's not that easy. Ties are not forgotten, they're severed. There's a popular theory that this page shows the future, as this line and the expression on Krolo Lucifer's face might show that the Phantom Troop has already been wiped out. We've added a detailed video about this scene in the description section, so be sure to check that out too. To sum it up, the skull scene and the line, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison is far more dangerous than I imagined, or after Kropika's panicking scene and before Krolo's angry scene. Now, from here on, we will explain what the skull might represent. 2. The Meaning of the Skull we want to share four theories. The first theory is Kropika's Steel Chain. This is the one that readers would naturally think of. Kropika is invoking the Emperor Time, when for every second, one hour of his lifespan is reduced. And in a situation where he doesn't know how long the situation will last, the skull scene with the line, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison is far more dangerous than I imagined, is a very smooth and understandable transition. Kropika's abilities are divided into his five fingers where, the thumb is the Holy Chain healing ability. The middle finger is the Chain Jail, a binding ability that can only be used on members of the Phantom Troop to force his opponent into a Zetsu state. The ring finger is the Dowsing Chain with a Dowsing ability. The pinky is the Judgment Chain, which wraps a chain around his opponent's heart and forces them to follow his order. And finally, the index finger is the Steel Chain. This Steel Chain is probably the most recent chain Kropika acquired as Kropika had been advised by his master, Izunavi, to keep one of his five fingers free because, he told him, when you're actually fighting, if you realize something is missing, I suggest you add an ability to compensate for it. As a result of Kropika's experience, he conjured his current steel chain, an ability that allows him to temporarily steal other people's abilities. But in this scene, it was probably the first time he used it in a real life situation. Therefore, the quote, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison is far more dangerous than I imagined, is understandable after he uses this ability for the first time. The second theory is Krolo Lucilfer's limitations. 
If you look at the skull, it certainly looks like it's about Kropika Steel Chain, as it's on the same page. However, if you look at it from a double page point of view, the skull is also immediately followed by Krolo Lucifer's scene. So we can also speculate that the skull could also be about Krolo Lucifer. Assuming that it is about Krolo Lucifer, what does the line, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison, that is far more dangerous than I imagined, mean to Krolo? One possible answer is Krolo Lucifer's limitations. Krolo's new ability, Double Face, gives him new limitations. In the Hisoka vs. Krolo Lucifer fight, he said, I had to hold the book with my right hand, but I was forced to make adjustments when I stole an ability that required both hands to be empty to activate. This gave me more limitations, but the improvements are enormous, says Krolo Lucifer, and the skull implies these new limitations. We believe that the limitations of Double Face are that he has to explain his abilities to his opponent and that he cannot lie about them. But it's hard to say if the line, far more dangerous poison than you might imagine, is really about these limitations. So we think another possible explanation is the Sun and Moon ability that knocked Hisoka. Sun and Moon was originally the ability of an elder from Meteor City. It can trigger a powerful explosion when the two marks he leaves on his target touch, a positive mark from his left hand and a negative mark from his right one. Normally, abilities stolen by the Skill Hunter ability disappear once the original owner dies. However, according to Krolo, the Elder from Meteor City is already dead, but the ability did not disappear due to the Elder's postmortem Nen. Maybe there were severe limitations on the Sun and Moon as well, and when Krolo used it again inside the Black Whale, he thought that it was a much more dangerous poison than imagined. Or perhaps the double face restrictions that we are anticipating, which are to explain your abilities to your opponent and not to lie about them, are wrong, and the limitation is a far more dangerous poison than imagined. Next up is our third theory on the Judgment Chain. Krolo was attacked by Kropika's Judgment Chain at the end of the York New City arc. Krolo was ordered that 1. You are forbidden to use your Nen ability at all in the future, and 2. You shall cut ties with the other members of the troop. And if he defies any of these two orders, he will lose his life. However, now that the Judgment Chain has been removed by the exorcist Abengane, who was on Greed Island, Krolo can again use his Nen ability and make contact with the troop members. The people who have received the Judgment Chain so far are Uvogan, Hakunoda, and Krolo. Of course, Kropika might have used the Judgment Chain on others while collecting the Scarlet Eye, but out of those three, Uvogan and Pakunoda have already defied Kropika's orders and lost their lives. Krolo is the only one who has received the Judgment Chain and is still alive today. But the Judgment Chain cannot be used by Kropika without him activating the Emperor Time, which shortens his life expectancy. This this may be a bit of a forced interpretation, but what if the opponent who received the Judgment Chain also has their life expectancy shortened, although not as quickly as Kropika? Then, after Krolo was cured by Abengane, he may have said, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison that is far more dangerous than I imagined, to admit how deadly it would have been to him. Furthermore, when Killua noticed the exorcist existence on Greed Island, he told Kropika over the phone, but Kropika stayed calm as if he already knew that. It was a little disconcerting for us to see that Kropika, who had only thought about revenge to the point of staking his own life, would assume that the judgment chain could be removed, and yet, not doing anything to stop it. However, if the Judgment Chain is something that gradually takes away the opponent's life expectancy as well, then Kropika might already be satisfied of having reduced Krolo's lifespan. In the York New City section, there was a scene in which Kropika could have tried to use the Judgment Chain on Gon, Killua, and Leorio so that his information isn't leaked to the truth. But Kropika said, Even if my secret is exposed, I will not regret anything. I have good friends. If Kropika knew that the person he chained had his life expectancy shortened, it would be natural that he would not want to chain his three best friends. But if we go with this assumption, then Kropika would have known from the beginning that his lifespan would be shortened when he triggered Emperor Time. And so it is weird that he panics that much. Therefore, this would counter the first theory we mentioned. The fourth theory is that the skull is a reference to both Kropika and Krolo. The skull and the line, I was naive, this ability, this limitation, this poison far more dangerous than I could have imagined, could apply to both Kropika's first time using his new ability, Theory 1, and to the limitations of Krolo's ability, Sun and Moon, and Double Face, Theory 2. Here is a recap of what we've seen so far about the possible meaning behind the skull. Theory 1, Steel Chain. Theory 2, Sun and Moon or Double Face limitations. Theory 3, Judgment Chain. And Theory 
Theory 4, a combination of Theories 1 and 2. At Hunter Hunter Institute, we believe that this last theory is the most probable, showing the downside of Kropika's steel chain and Krolo Lucifer's sun and moon. But the third theory, where the Phantom Troop has already been wiped out and Krolo has this expression because his life expectancy has been shortened by the Judgment Chain, could also be an exciting storyline. But obviously, it could also be a continuation of Kropika saying, Oh no, at this rate I cannot let Queen Oito use the ability. Just how long will I have to keep Emperor Time activated? So we can't completely eliminate the first theory. Which theory do you think is hidden behind the skull? The theories above are what we think the skull means. Thanks again for watching our videos. We really appreciate it. If you have any other theories of what the skull signifies, we would be very happy to read them in the comment section. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to discover more theories of the Hunter Hunter world. See you in the next video.